Hi, in this video, I'm going to present about the probability and counting rules. The objective of learning this chapter are to determine sample space and find the probability of an event, to find the probability of compound events using addition and multiplication rules, to find conditional probability of an event, and solving problems using counting rules. Now, let us see some basic concepts about probability. Probability comes from a probability experiment. Probability experiment is a chance process that leads to well-defined result called outcomes. So, outcome is the result of a single trial of a probability experiment. If we have a list of outcomes, then we have an event. The sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of a probability experiment. Now, let us see the example. If we have an experiment about toss one coin, the possible outcomes can be either head or tail. Therefore, the sample space head and tail. For roll a die, the possible outcomes can be from 1 until 6. So the sample space 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then, to answer a true or false question, the possible outcomes can be true or false. So the sample space true and false. And lastly, for the experiment about tossing two coins, the possible outcomes can be head head, tail tail, head tail, or tail head. Now, let us see example 1. Find the sample space for rolling two dice. We know that a die has six faces, therefore we have six outcomes for one die. For two dice, consists of 36 faces. Therefore, the possible outcomes must be 36. So to list all of them, we need to use a table. So the table that represents the sample space for this event could be like this. So this is the possible outcomes for die 1 and this is the possible outcomes for die 2. So all the number inside this table represent the combination of the outcomes from die 1 and die 2. Example 2. Find the sample space for the gender of the children if a family has 3 children. So we use B for boy, G for girl. For this event, we can use tree diagram or listing or both. So I show you. So for tree diagram, we consider this one as the first level. So the first level, we find the outcomes for the first child. So B or G. For the second level, we consider the outcomes for the second children. Also B or G and B or G for here. And the third one, we consider the third child. So to find the outcomes for three children, we need to list all of the alphabet based on each line. So for the first line, we have BBB, so this is the outcome. So if we list all of them, we have eight outcomes. So this is the sample space for the gender of the children if a family has three children. So let's say we need to find the sample space for the gender of the children if that family has four children. You just need to extend for the next level. So we will have another branch. So the outcomes will be 2 to the power of 4. That means we will have 16 possible outcomes. The formula for classical probability. The probability of any event E is the number of outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes in the sample space. So this is the notation. So P represents the probability and E for the event. So NE is the number of outcomes in E and NS represents the number of outcomes in sample space. I show you the example. Example 3. Find the probability of getting red face card which are Jack, Queen or King when randomly drawing a card from an ordinary deck. To do this example, you need to know that an ordinary deck consists of 52 cards. So the cards are like this. So there are four shapes, clover, spade, heart and diamond. 
and the first two rows are black and the second two are red. To find the red face card, which is Jack Queen and King Heart or Diamond, so we have six cards over here. So the probability would be six divided by the total, which is 52. And we simplify it, we get 3 over 26. Another example, if a family has three children, find the probability that exactly two of the three children are girls. To do this, we need to refer back to our previous tree diagram for the gender of, of the children. So this one. Now we refer to the possible outcomes. To find the probability that exactly two of the three children are girls, we refer to BGG, GPG, and GTB. So we have three. So the probability for this example will be 3 divided by 8. From the examples, you need to know some probability rules. The first one, the probability of any event E is a number, either a fraction or decimal between 0 and 1. And then, the sum of the probabilities of all outcomes must be equal to 1. If the event cannot occur, the probability is 0, and if the event is certain, then the probability is 1. You need to know that the number of the probability represent the certainty of an event to occur. So if the number closer to 1, that means the certainty of the event to occur is much higher. Complement of an event E is the set of outcomes in the sample space that are not included in the outcomes of event E. So this is the notation we read as E bar. The rule for complementary events. The probability of E bar equals to 1 minus probability of E. The probability of E equals to 1 minus probability of E bar. That means the total must be always equals to 1. If we have this universal set with this circle represent the probability of E, then the probability of E bar will be the area outside the circle. Now let us see this example. In a study, it was found that 23% of the people surveyed said that vanilla was their favorite flavor of ice cream. If a person is selected at random, find the probability that the person's favorite flavor of ice cream is not vanilla. So if we see the keyword not or does not, that means we need to find the probability for complementary event. So this number 23% is the probability of event E. So to find the probability of E bar, in terms of percentage, we consider 100% minus 23%. So we get the answer straight away, which is 77%. If we have a frequency distribution, we can also extract the probability of an event using this formula. So we use the formula frequency for the class divided by the total frequencies in the distribution or F divided by N. This formula is called empirical probability. So for example, let's say we have a sample of 50 people and we have the number 21 had type O blood, 22 had type A blood, 5 had type B blood, and 2 had type AB blood. So to find the empirical probability for this example, we need to set up a frequency distribution first. So the frequency distribution will be like this. So we make a simple table, and then this one represents the blood type. So for blood type, we have 4, we have O, a, B, and AB. And then this one represents the frequency. So we have 21 for O, 22 for A, 5 for B, and 2 for AB. So we need to find the total frequency first. So if we total up, we have 50. So to answer the first question, let's say we want to find the probability for a person 
has type of blood so we just search away refer to the frequency distribution so for A we will have 21 divided by 50 for B we have the keyword or so or we have to plus so for type A or type B we plus the number 22 plus 5 divided by 50 then for C, we have the keyword neither nor. That means cannot be A or O. So to find this, we have to exclude A or O. That means we consider B or AB. So we have 7 comes from 2 plus 5. So divided by the total, which is 50, then we get the answer. And lastly, for does not have type AB, so we have to consider other than AB. So we consider O plus A plus B. E. So we have 21 plus 22 plus 5. And we divided by 50. Next example. Hospital records indicate that knee replacement patients stayed in the hospital for the number of days shown in the distribution. Alright, so for this example, we have several keywords such as exactly, fewer than, at most, at least. So for question A, we need to consider the probability for a patient stayed exactly 5 days. So we need to refer to the table of frequency distribution. So we get the number 56. So the probability for question A is 56 divided by the total which is 127. For B, fewer than, that means we have to consider the number of days less than 6 and cannot be 6. So we need to consider 3, 4, and 5. So we add them 15 plus 32 plus 56 and then you divide by 127. For at most, that means you need to consider the number before 4 and 4. That means for this table, we consider 3 and 4. So the number 15 plus 32 and to get the probability for a patient stay at most 4 days. So this one divided by 127. And for the last question, if we want to find the probability for at least 5 days. So at least means for the number more than 5 and including 5. So for this table, we consider 5, 6 and 7. So we plus 56, 19 and 5. And then divided by the total 127. And that's the solution for example 7.